Let's talk about your game-changing research and what you're doing with the Low Vision Clinic and what, what your research is finding. Um, so my research is focused on three broad areas. One is trying to understand how vision impairment affects long-term health and functioning outcomes. So I work with individuals and clinicians in the Low Vision Center to understand how eye disease, visual function, and re vision rehabilitation can be impactful for the long-term health and quality of life for people with vision impairment, so across the lifespan. And the other aspect is um, reducing health and healthcare disparities for people with vision impairment. So again, what we just spoke about, creating opportunities for better access to care and increased utilization of not only vision services, but also other aspects of healthcare for people with vision impairment who may be disadvantaged in um, opportunities for a variety of settings and situations because of their vision impairment. And the third area of work is this disability inclusion piece where I'm really focused on trying to increase the perspective of individuals with vision impairment and other disabilities in science and medicine because I really learn to appreciate the value that those individuals have in driving innovation and enhancing patient care. That's a needed perspective that right now is really absent. You also have impressed me with, and I think um, this is going to help in the future, because I know you need to really look at this in, the f as in your research, but I know what you do is by saving your vision. You know, I know how you, because I've told you before, I think you have a lot of true grit and you really know how to look at something and these challenges and just keep moving forward. And I think it's so important. And that's what I'm saying. I think here at Wilmer, and you know, you're a role model for so many things, so many things. So I want to talk to you. I know it's not scientific right now, and that's why you're not saying it, but I'm good with it because I think for our listeners out there that, you know, kind of if what you do is very much how to get through a day yeah. in this, I call it saving vision, yeah. the saving vision concept yeah. of a person, right. So could you elaborate on that? Sure, yeah. And like I said, I know it's not scientifically yeah, no. there yet. Yeah. Go ahead. So I get this question a lot, sort of how do I manage my day with less vision, right? And exactly, so my strategy is saving the amount of good vision I have for the tasks that I have to achieve. And so I have strategy, people that know me well, everything I do has strategy and I'm strategic yeah, right. in all of my approaches. <laughs> exactly. Right. So for me, for my vision impairment, I try and save my good useful vision um, on, on my job primarily during the work week. So for example, at home, my house is extremely organized. So the milk is always where the milk is. The cereal is always where the cereal is. So when I'm helping my kids get ready in the morning, I don't use my vision searching and scanning for those things. So I save my vision for when I get to work and I need to do the things that I need to do with my vision. Um, and I have those types of strategies really integrated throughout the day. They're, my life is really built around this concept of saving my vision for the things that I need to achieve. Um, and that's really been my approach. The other aspect of that, that I don't think people always understand or appreciate when they start to lose vision, is I don't try and see things that I don't need to see. That, that's what I think and, is remarkable when you said that. Yeah. Yes. And you know, when I first was losing my vision and was diagnosed, you spend a lot of energy and resources trying to see everything, and that's exhausting. And at this point in my life, I don't. So. For example, I always give this example, I'm a runner, I've been a runner since I was in junior high, and I still run. And when I run, if I see something coming at me or approaching an obstacle, I don't waste my vision trying to figure out what it is, I just know I need to go around it, maneuver around it, so that's an example. It takes practice and it takes skill to not process that confusing visual information, but it helps me save my vision. And part of that being comfortable with not seeing everything really is almost this, um, leap of faith, of being a little bit uncomfortable all the time, which is what I do sometimes talk to patients about when they approach me about my strategy, and that, that can be hard, but you have to 
learn to live in that yellow, a little bit uncomfortable zone, being okay with not seeing everything and realizing you're still going to be okay. Right, because you're losing control, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and you've got to be right. okay with that. But the interesting thing I have found from living in that space is it has really interesting spillover in the rest of your life. You know, you, you get to take strategic risks and be a little bit uncomfortable with discomfort, but then you start to take really interesting risks with, you know, your professional career. I was and, say other and, things. and you push yourself right. in really interesting ways, I've found. So, and, and I think that's what I'm it's saying. I think you inspire impact. so many people here at Wilmer in more ways than just a visual disability. That, that's where I, what I was getting to. But I also love this idea, I call it the saving sight concept. I think it's going to be, like I said, you'll do scientific research on this and we'll hear about it yep. later.